my brothers and sisters, it may very well be that it's because we know the end of the story before it begins. And in this season of unrest across the globe, it's puzzling sometime when we look at what is going on. I, I ran across a, a couple of books with the same prophetic utterance, one by uh, Sylvia Brown's The End of Days and Dean Kuntz's The Eyes of Darkness, and both quoted the same utterance about our day. They say in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe attacking the lungs and the bronchial tube and resting all, uh, resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrives, attack again in 10 years later, and then disappear completely. However, there is a level of confidence that the saints can have because of our relationship with God because no matter what happens we know God and we know that our relationship gives us security in an insecure world. Well, it reminds me, it reminds me, brother preachers, of a story of a young girl who gave her father a book to read. She checked back with him in a couple of hours to monitor his progress and ask him had he started on it yet. The father replied, oh yes, I'm finished. I got the message. She looked at him strangely and began to interrogate him concerning the book. She noted that he did not have all of the particulars but somehow he knew very well the outcome. So she asked him, how did you know how the story ended? The father looked at his daughter and said, I read the end first. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes when the vicissitudes of life become overbearing and it seems like God is not coming to our rescue the way we want him to, we need to make sure that we read the end first. I may not know all of the particulars of life, but I already know the outcome. God is going to see us through. Uh, might I admonish you to read the end first because even though the beginning says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, the end says, uh, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Even though the beginning says in John 16 and 33 in the world ye shall have tribulation the end says but be of good cheer I have overcome the world even though the beginning says we are troubled on every side the end says yet not in distress we're perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed Paul spoke to his son Timothy and in, in the third chapter of 2 Timothy and starting at the 11th verse and said persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. So the reason that we can rejoice and shout in the midst of what we're going through is because we already know the outcome first. Well, my brothers and sisters, look again at the affirmations with which it opens. This particular psalm, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The affirmation seemed to answer the question. My heart will not fear, and in this will I be confident. My head shall be lifted up. I will sing, yea, I will sing. My brothers and sisters, there is a moment of prayer in verses 7 through E13, which comes from the private heart of David, which is filled with a perfect confidence that 
overwhelms his pain. Every now and then, we need to just sit still and think about what God promised us. And if we meditate on that, it will overwhelm the pain that we feel. I heard him say, hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, have pity on me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, O Lord, I will seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not angrily turn me away. You have been my help. Do not leave me. Do not abandon me oh God my savior and he skips down to the 11th verse and said teach me your way oh Lord lead me on a level path because I have enemies who spy on me do not surrender me to the will of my opponents false witnesses have risen against me they breathe out violence and finally there is that stand of the psalm which causes it to crescendo and, uh, and all who hear it rise with it. It says, wait on the Lord. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall, somebody say shall, he shall strengthen thine heart. Let me remind somebody today who is tripping, let me remind Remind somebody who is despondent. Let me remind somebody who is biting their fingernails and pulling their hair out and forming an ulcer. Let me remind you to wait on the Lord because the Lord will come through. Do me a favor. Help me preach to somebody and tell them God he is coming through. This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.